Are you planning a trip to the vibrant city of Dubai? Or have you already booked your flights? If so, then you're in the right place. In this video, we'll provide you with all the essential information and travel tips to make your holiday unforgettable. Make sure to watch before you go so you don't miss out on these must-know tips for your visit to one of the most exciting destinations in the world. Hi guys, welcome to the Roving Valleys. Thank you for joining us for our review of our recent three-day stopover in Dubai. It can get very, very hot in Dubai. It can. We were in Dubai in late spring and it was about 38 degrees Celsius, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So very warm. <laughs> it's probably a good time to go, though, the shoulder season. Definitely a good time to go. Or winter. Yeah. Summer, I think, would be very, very warm and quite unbearable, I would say, unless you're in the air conditioning somewhere or by the water. Yeah. We were um, speaking with locals who were saying that it was 50 degrees and higher in summer so it would be murder yeah unbearable <laughs> for me 90 percent of the population of dubai is expats so a lot of them would go home in the middle of summer when there's less tourists there but then it is cheaper time to go accommodation it is, is cheap because they can't fill the rooms yeah it's not somewhere i would go at that time of year but mm. you know each to their own yeah. <laughs> So we didn't need to pre-book the visa before we arrived in Dubai? No, you just went through customs and they stamped your passport with a 30-day visitor's visa. Made it easy. Yep. The local currency in Dubai is called the dirham. So 100 dirham will get you about 41 or 42 Australian dollars uh, or about 27 US dollars. I think it's actually pegged to the US dollar so it doesn't change. We didn't take any cash out when we were there. We were only there for a few days, so we chose to use our credit card. Credit cards were taken everywhere, Visa and MasterCard, and even American Express in a lot of places. So we didn't really need cash. In saying that, it's always useful to have some cash with you. Just as a backup, you know, maybe $100 worth just to get by if you need if you need it or your card doesn't work or something happens, it's just an, a good backup. Or a taxi driver's credit card machine isn't working. Yeah, it's <laughs> handy to just have a little a backup plan. We were pleasantly surprised to see that most people spoke English, so that made it a lot easier for us to converse with people. Arabic is the local language, being a Middle Eastern country. But English is spoken everywhere and all the signs and the menus are all in English as well as Arabic. So, so that makes it easy to oh, travel around. Super, easy super to... easy. So normally when we travel, we just use our local phone plan because it does have an international roaming function to it. Unfortunately, it didn't work in Dubai. So we were going to get a local SIM card there, but we found that we didn't need that because there was Wi-Fi everywhere. So we were able to contact friends and family back home and do what we needed to do just through Wi-Fi as we we're only there for a short amount of time. If we were there for longer, we would definitely consider getting an eSIM or a local SIM card. But because we were there for a short time, we certainly got through with the Wi-Fi. Yeah, there was free Wi-Fi in all the restaurants and the malls and everywhere you go, really. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get lost. We'd just stop into a shop, look at our Google Maps. And that's a good tip, actually. If you, if you are lost and you sort of need to find your way around somewhere, always go into a local hotel, use their Wi-Fi and you can sort of find your way around again or download the map and screenshot it and you're, you're good to go again. So mm. that, that is something I had to do at some point in our travels. Dubai is a multicultural melting pot for food and the different cuisines. You can pretty much get everything there. I, mm. There wasn't anything that I didn't see that you could get there. No. So if you feel like some type of cuisine in particular, I'm sure you'd be able to find it in Dubai. Oh, absolutely. There was a big Indian influence. Mm. We ate quite a lot of Indian food there and Iranian and Lebanese food was very popular. But if you wanted a hamburger or pizza, you can certainly find that. You don't have to look too far, especially in areas like the Dubai Marina and the JBR. 
They do also have a food delivery system. It's called Deliveroo. You can download their app before you arrive in Dubai and they will deliver it to your hotel. They won't come up to your room, but you can meet them in the foyer mm. if you prefer to just stay in your hotel and, and not go out and about because you're tired. That's also an option for you too. It's very safe in Dubai. Dubai is one of the safest places in the world. So there's no need to worry about getting mugged or high crime rates. It's a very safe place to travel to. Yeah, I think there's basically no violent crime at all. It's, if there's anything, a little petty crime, but that's very rare. And one thing that's fabulous if you're a solo female traveller is they do have female-only taxis, which I thought was a great idea. So that's something to bear in mind mm. too. If it's a concern and you just want that little bit of extra peace of mind, then, yeah, jump in an all-female taxi. With a female driver. Yeah. Mm. In Islam, drinking alcohol is prohibited, so we weren't really sure whether we'd be able to have a drink when we were in Dubai. But the hotels and restaurants, certain restaurants are often licensed, so you are able to have a drink there if you so desire. Yes, and particularly places like uh, Dubai Marina, where there's a lot of expats and a bit of a party place. Mm. But drinking outside in public is a no-no. And being drunk in public is definitely a no-no. So you, you just have to be a bit more aware of the local customs. Mm. Another thing about Islamic countries is that it's the custom to dress conservatively. So covering your shoulders if you're a lady, covering your knees is a good way to present yourself. In saying that, it is a highly touristy area and you do see people getting around in shorter sleeve shirts and singlet tops and shorter shorts, especially in those touristy areas. I think if you were to go outside of the touristy areas, it would be more important to make sure that you're covered respectfully. Yeah, and if you were visiting a mosque or something like that, you would need to cover your shoulders and wear longer pants. So there's no real tipping culture in Dubai, not like in America anyway. It's probably similar to, an, to Australia. So if you feel like you've had a good service at a restaurant or a taxi service, then you might throw them a, a little bit of a tip, but it's not really a, a big culture of tipping there. Arriving into Dubai Airport is quite the experience. <laughs> I've never had to walk so far in an airport in my life. It's one of it's the biggest airport I've ever been to. I don't think I've ever been in a, a space that large. I don't know how no. the roof stayed up. So it was so big. And you think because you're arriving early in the morning, like we arrived at five o'clock in the morning or something, that everything would be closed and but everything was open. Oh, Every open single shop was open. 24 hours, I think. It was incredible. Yeah. But it is a very, very, very big airport. So wear comfortable walking shoes. Yeah. I did not have my comfortable walking shoes on and I regretted that. <laughs> An interesting thing, they had prams that you could grab as you got off your plane. Unfortunately, not big enough. No. Because, um, <laughs> I may have gotten one otherwise. <laughs> yeah. But it's certainly if you had a family with small kids... They wouldn't, after a long flight, want to be walking 20 to 30 minutes to get to a customs area. No. So I don't think it's the largest airport terminal, at least not anymore, um, but they're undergoing uh, big renovations and they're going to increase it fivefold the size of the terminal when it'll definitely be the largest airport terminal in the world then. And then I think I may end up buying one of those ride-on suitcases that we tried out <laughs> in the Virgin Megastore. <laughs> 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 because that would certainly save your feet if you could sit on that and ride right down to your gate. <laughs> Brilliant idea. Yeah. As far as taxis go in Dubai, when you come out of the airport, there are hundreds of taxis. You definitely <laughs> do not need to pre-book a transfer because that it's like a well-oiled machine. I've never seen anything like it in my life. You come out, you're straight there, they you know, move you on to the next taxi and off you go. And they're all legitimate taxis and they've all got their meters on and it cost us about 65 dirham to get to downtown Dubai, which was about a 30-minute trip, I guess. Something like that, yeah, yeah. so that's about 27 Australian dollars. The metro also 
goes all the way to the airport as well. So if you want a cheap alternative, then you can always catch the Metro for only a few dirham. But because we were there so early in the morning, it was much easier for us to get the taxi and splurge on that. Mm. <laughs> and the taxis were everywhere. Oh yeah. You yeah. didn't you didn't have to look too far. On the way back to the airport at the end of our trip, uh, we left from our hotel in Dubai Marina and that cost about 100 dirham to get there, which is about 42 Australian dollars or 27 US. So the mm. hotels do have their own transfers as well and they will be a little bit more than the local taxis but they do provide a very comfortable car and they do have a little bit better service, I would say. There's quite a few ways to get around Dubai. Uh, probably the cheapest way is the Dubai Metro. And we caught that. It was only six dirham to travel two zones and it was nice comfortable air conditioned carriage very busy though it was at the time that we went the only issue is that there's only two lines uh, on the metro in dubai so maybe a bit of walking to do from where the metro stop is to where the attraction or the place that you want to visit so the metro is probably not the best solution if you're traveling to a hotel and your hotel's not right next to a metro stop because lugging your baggage in that heat yeah, that wouldn't be much fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think my preference was definitely a taxi. Another way to travel is by bus, and particularly the hop on, hop off bus. And there was two bus companies, and we chose big bus tours. And that was really good, especially if you're short on time. No, yeah, they're great. And they have headphones for different languages, so you can listen to all the commentary in your own language. And you can, like they say, hop on and hop off where you want to. So we did a one-day tour. The best value is a two-day ticket. Mm -hmm. And if we had more time, we would have done two days. There was two lines. One went up to the marina and the palm area and the other went to the old town of dubai we did one in the morning and one in the afternoon and we only had one hop off if you wanted to do more than two or three hop offs definitely you would need two days mm, yeah for sure i would recommend if you've got the time definitely buy the two day mm. without a doubt but yeah. if you want to see all of dubai in a day you can done. do both yeah. lines and you've got the your headphones done. with the, yeah. the the tour information commentary. the commentary so it's just like a tour and you'll see everything if you in the day are doing it in one day though start off early go leave with the first tour mm. because there's a lot to see and do the dubai like mall is the it. base for the tours when we did hop off it was at ski dubai which was an experience mm, that was good fun <laughs> we had lots of fun <laughs> ride on an Abra which takes you from one side of the creek to the other and it's only a one dirham so that's yeah. like probably the cheapest thing in Dubai but <laughs> you can also hire them like privately for about 120 dirham for an hour and you can do tours around the, uh, the creek and whatnot so you know something. if you like your boating then mm, that might that be an be option to do There's four main suburbs that people usually stay at uh, when they come to Dubai as a tourist. The cheapest area to stay in Dubai is the old town around Dubai Creek, uh, either side of the creek. It's not your classic skyscraper Dubai that you see in all the tourist shots, but it's a really interesting area and a cheap place to stay and also cheap places to eat. And close to the airport if you're only sort of staying in Dubai for a day, it would be a good place to stay. Yeah, it would be. I mean, Dubai started up as a fishing and pearling village, and it's only been since the mid-60s when they discovered oil that international trade 
picked up and it became a wealthy city. This old town of Dubai gives you a good impression of what it used to be like. If you want to buy uh, souvenirs, uh, here's a tip. Buy them at the old Dubai. It's much cheaper to get them there than it is in the malls. Mm, definitely. We chose to stay in the downtown Dubai area and also the Dubai Marina area. Yeah, the downtown area was our favourite. Mm, it was a great location for the mall, for restaurants and the Burj Khalifa and the hop-on, hop-off buses. We found for our first visit there, it was a really good location. We enjoyed yeah. that spot. There's a variety of different accommodation choices there from expensive five-star places to some more boutique apartments, but it's certainly more expensive than the old Dubai. We stayed at the Swiss Hotel. Which is right near Dubai Mall. It was a fabulous location for one, Dubai Mall, and two, for the hop-on, hop-off buses because it was literally across the road. There was a lot to do there in, around that downtown area for free, the Dubai Mall, the fountain show. Dubai Mall. Oh my goodness. We walked all day. We got lost and we still didn't see all of the mall. It's the biggest mall I've ever been to in my life, but apparently it's not the world's biggest mall, which surprised me. It's one of the biggest. It's one of the biggest. It's the biggest big. in the top five. And I think it's got every single shop that you can imagine that you've seen in America, Australia, UK, you know, all the big names are there. And we did get lost though. And then we realised where we were was way, way, way away from where we started. So then we had to find all our way back again. So it's a massive mall. It was part worth, of the fun. It was part of the fun and definitely worked checking out it's a great yeah. free activity actually dubai is not the cheapest country but if you want to do some free stuff the shopping malls are definitely a good place to go window shopping they're air conditioned <laughs> uh, there's an amazing aquarium there there's lots of lovely coffee shops mm. and little cake shops yep. lots of restaurants and um, then there's the dubai fountain show just outside and that's another nice free activity so there's plenty to do in a mall mm. the shopping is tax-free for tourists as well if you spend over a certain amount. Mm. So if you spend over 250 dirham, you can claim the VAT back when you leave. As long as you remember to do so at the airport, we forgot. <laughs> we also bought tickets to go up and climb the Burj Khalifa. We got the VIP tickets that took us up a few extra floors, which I think was worthwhile. Mm. Not, not for the view necessarily, because it wasn't that much of a difference, but definitely for the crowds. And it is a lot more expensive, the VIP tour. So if you were on a budget, don't stretch yourself. Where we found the benefit was that we did go at sunset and there were massive crowds. And the biggest benefit of that was when we were coming down the lift, we got straight on to the lift, whereas other people would have been waiting at least an hour. Dubai Marina is the most popular area to stay for expats and tourists from the west so you've got two parts to it you've got the marina area around a canal then you've got the the beach area which is the jumeirah beach residence or jbr area and it's you can walk along the boardwalk there along the beach it's really nice yeah and it was a lot more popular i think for younger people it seemed to be a lot more younger people in that area but we did notice the increase in costs of food and restaurants there compared to downtown so that's something to consider as well it was very noticeable it was yeah. quite a lot yep. more expensive than downtown dubai mm, definitely but it was a lot more pedestrian friendly mm. it was a nice they call it the walk you walk around the marina area and the beach and it was lovely that's lots good. of restaurants and lots cafes bars along the beach like you said it was more the beach party vibe there mm. the young people having fun mm. palm jumeirah is the reclaimed land in the shape of a palm tree and there's a lot of high-end luxury hotel accommodation there like the atlantis mm. which is an iconic structure right at the end of the palm you've also got the burj al arab there which is a luxury resort it's about two thousand dollars a night <laughs> and so if you've got that much money then splurge but we didn't so we no. didn't stay there <laughs> maybe yeah. one day <laughs> it's an urban myth that it's the only seven-star hotel in the world. Um, I think somebody said that at one stage, but really they only go up to five-star, so it's, it's a myth. But it's a nice myth to have. There's just so many things to do in Dubai, and 
you, we didn't have enough time to do all the things we wanted to do. So we'll definitely be back. We're definitely going to go back. For well, sure. I want to go up the frame. You can, you can go all the way to the top of that. And um, I want to visit Museum of the Future. And uh, that looks amazing. Um, Atlantis. Atlantis, yes. Water slide park there. We actually went to the water slide park in the original Atlantis in the Bahamas uh, with the kids way back 10 years ago or so. It's a great place to visit and a great place to stop over if you're going over to Europe or other places. It is, yeah. especially coming from Australia. I think it was about 13 or 14 hour flight mm. to Dubai. So it's a good place to break up your flight and then travel the rest of the way if you're going all the way to Europe. Yeah, we've always found that we pull up a lot better if we do break up our trip rather yeah. than going all the way there. It just knocks you around a lot more, whereas doing it this way, we certainly acclimatised a lot better. We had a great trip, a great time, great experience, ultra modern. It's like stepping onto another planet, like the modern planet. I've never seen <laughs> so many new, big, oh. shiny, the biggest, the best, the shiniest. Yeah, the largest, amazing. the tallest. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> incredible. And the people. Yeah. The people of Dubai are lovely. Yeah, they're all very friendly. They're very, very welcoming. willing to help. Yep, they welcome, welcome to Dubai, you know. So it's a, a great stopover. Definitely recommend going to Dubai. Put Absolutely. It Put it on your list. But Absolutely. anyway, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you found it informative. If you liked what you saw, please hit like and subscribe below. It means a lot to us and it shows us that we're putting out information that you're interested in watching as well. In the meantime, have a wonderful day, whatever you're doing and wherever you are in the world. And thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.